So, um, I'm I'm curious. Do you listen to do, do you listen to anything to distract your your, oh, your, yeah. your mind while you're while you're doing these? I try to, but a lot of the time I'll end up pausing to go between something. Uh, you mm. know, when it's not the dulcet sounds of my airbrush compressor cycling to refill the tank. <laughs> um, I actually, yeah, I ended up getting a little bit into cheap vinyl because I'm oh. right near a bunch of really good thrift stores, and I got a huge '80s kick going on. So I've got uh, was a bunch of ABC, Duran Duran, uh, Hall and Oates, you know. Nice. <laughs> But um, my big thing is atmospheric drum and bass, you know, L- stuff like LTJ Bookum. That is a nice background sound, which mm. also sounds nice, futuristic, and focusy. You know, it's the sound, yeah. it's the music you listen to when you're trying to hack the Gibson. <laughs> 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 uh, good, it's good for work, too. If I'm trying to build mm. a PowerShell script to do something elaborate and ah. stupid, you know, it's nice to put on headphones and work to it. Yeah. That's one of the other nice things. You know, that, uh, that that earlier point, you know, for a lot of us geeks, where you know we we make a living by making little clicky sounds on a keyboard, um, you know, having something and, and the, like uh, Gunpla and where a model kit will cost fifteen bucks, maybe, you know, you can buy something, try it, play around with it. If it doesn't work, okay, go on to the next one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm coming from, you know, you know, a big privilege, you know, let's spend some <laughs> dosh lads, anything yeah. kind of that. But 15 bucks is not bad. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there's big ones out there. I mean, oh, yeah. the 1144th Neo Zeong is about three feet tall and runs you about 250 bucks. Wow. Yeah. I, I, Where would I, I display I a, that? <laughs> look, look, I own a freaking house and I got no room to display that. <laughs> you know, my wife and I, we have a wonderful compromise. We have our nerd room. I have one day top shelf. I'm going to have to cycle Gunpla in and out. Yep. But there... There's no room mm. to put a freaking Neo Zeong of that size. But <laughs> you know, they, they come in all price points and sizes. Yeah. And it's not a prohibitive cost thing. Mm-hmm. The tools that you absolutely really need to have will run you like eh, 40 bucks for the, the side cutters at Gundam Planet and an exacto mm-hmm. knife and some extra blades. Mm-hmm. And that's it. These yeah. things last. They have applications outside of plastic right. modeling. Yeah. And it's you know, it's not a huge barrier to entry. I mean, look, if you gotta, you can get a lot of the, the stuff you need on AliExpress. And that's basically, mm. hey, we buy everything from China every way. Well, anyway, why not just buy straight from the Chinese factories? There yeah. you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there you go. You can get everything you need from there for super cheap. Mm. Harbor Freight Tools becomes mm. your new best friend oh, for all kinds great. of equipment and stuff. Yeah. And between, between those, you get a lot for cheap. Yeah. Have you ever considered going back to a model you built and uh, sort of um, retweaking it, reworking it? I think about that from time to time. Yeah. You know, a lot of what I build in, in general, I like to build with a start and an end. Mm-hmm. And I could easily go back and do more to it. To me, I would much rather redo it and reincorporate all the new stuff that I've learned between then and now. I mean, a good example, I've got, I'm looking right now, <laughs> off screen, at the 144th scale Zaku 1 Sniper from Gundam mm-hmm. Unicorn. Mm-hmm. And when I built that, I really, it has a spherical shoulder. Mm. It's perfectly spherical. And I tried my best to get a good seam joint on that. Mm. I couldn't quite get it to look proper, so there's still a little bit of seam there. In addition, the front leg seams are, they're there. Mm. They're hard to see, but they're there. Mm. To be honest, I would probably go back, redo everything, you know, get a better job of sanding, and mm. then I'll take the gun, do a, you know, do a better reverse wash to highlight the inner barrel, mm. and a bunch of other techniques to make it pop. Then I'll just replace the old one. Mm. Uh, I mean, I have the ability to do that. I can always buy a new one. Mm-hmm. But that's not to say that you can't take something, even if it's been painted, and start over. Mm-hmm. You dip that mm-hmm. thing in purple power or some other, you know, carb cleaner or brick cleaner, mm-hmm. you will have no more paint remaining. You'll have bare plastic, mm-hmm. and you can start fresh. Yeah. Just Ooh. because I don't want to do it doesn't mean it's not possible. Mm-hmm. I, I hear never that. thought of that. Yeah. No, Ray Bradbury says that um, he would never rewrite one of his old stories because, how did he put it, um, he does not want to um, do a disservice to that younger writer who was him, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> to say, he was doing the best he could with what he, he did, that's fine, I'm a different person now, you know, I'm, I, I, I write new stories. So it's a, you know, different ways of, of looking at it, but, uh, yeah. yeah I, exactly, I, I, my shitty fan fiction from back in the day <laughs> is different from the shitty fan fiction I wrote last month. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. 
yes. <laughs> but uh, have have you ever held off on a model because you say, oh, this is I I, I just want to refine my skills mm. on something else before I get to this one because this oh, one's yes, definitely. When I years ago, well, not too many years ago, recently they came out with the Master Grade Tall Geese. You know, mm. the first actual one one hundred scale Tall Geese, and I'm talking the Tall Geese one. That's mm. kind of my all time favorite other than a Dom. Mm. I initially asked my friend Sophie, you know, and I paid her for it to to commission build it for me. Oh. She and she's an award winning builder, mm. and you know, in the end, her backlog just came to a point where she just had it, you know, in her house, and I was like, you know what? I'll take it off your hands. You know what? You just give me what is it. Let me have it back, and I'm going to build it. Mm. I ended up doing some of it. I broke a couple of parts. Ooh. I got the replacements, and they've been sitting on my shelf. But oh, the next time I approach the tall geese, it is going to be fully painted, in a frame and out. It's going to be top-coated before assembly, piece by piece. Mm. Each and every part is going to be painted and primed and painted as applicable. The outer parts are going to be pre-shaded. It is going to be done as... Uh, as something as my favorite all time single mobile suit, I want to do it justice, mm -hmm. and I could start it any time I want. I could drop the diorama I'm working on and start it now and do this. Mm. But I want it to be done when I have no other ideas, no other projects. When I'm mm -hmm. ready yeah. to do justice to the tall geese, mm -hmm. that's when I'm going to do it. Yeah. Cool. Have Have you ever found that uh, additional paint uh, builds up uh, areas where? Uh, parts don't fit as well uh, that you have to uh, uh, take off some of the paint just just for better fitting or mm. uh oh the way that a lot of it works is you try. They're they're engineered so that you might not necessarily have these surfaces coming into contact. Mm. But that said, I've had problems more on the HY2 and Rick Dom because that, as a painted build, was done with all clad and uh, acrylic top coating. Or sorry, not top coating, candy coating. And by that and by the nature of that, it's hard to get a good top coat on it. So I do have some paint flaking off because of the way mm. that the moving parts are going up against each other. Mm. So what I'm the best thing I can do for situations like that is. I might have to end up scraping off some or just redoing parts of it or just painting over it so it looks like when stuff comes off it's intentional uh. or, or at least you know it's going to come down to the base color it is what it is mm -hmm. so I mean the trick really is in the end you want to make sure that your parts are top coated that at least protects the underlying paint it'll make it that much harder to chip off mm -hmm. but in general it's hard to engineer a Gundam that's going to be having parts that are painted come into contact outside of inner frame parts mm -hmm. those yeah, how, I'm, that's why I'm waiting on Tolkien's. I'm going to have inner frame rotating parts, mm -hmm. which may be exposed coming into each other. Yeah. I mean, hell, the Zaku 2 that I'm doing now for my diorama has a couple of parts which were, you know, which are still red because they were on the inside of the alligator clip that I used to paint them. Uh. So they're, they've got a little bit of red going out to take them off and start fresh. And some of them I, I might just swap over for a normal Zaku 2 and start in and start with those. Mm. You know, you live, you learn. Mm -hmm. Totally. Wow. Cool. This seems like a fun hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It yeah. really is. It, it it is a hobby to eat a lot of your time, money, and attention. I, I I find myself wondering why don't I have a portable bag that I bring with me to work so I can you know <laughs> take a lunch and work on Gumbla. Yeah. No, it, it's no different than what I normally do. I I got freaking anime on my phone that I watch during my lunch break. <laughs> It's no, it's no yeah. worse to be building a model kit. There we go. Well, I'm, not, I'm taking a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mobile model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the the mobile model mobile suit kit. So the mobile <laughs> suit model mobile. Yeah. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, uh, well, thank you again so much for doing this. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we uh, head off? Um, all I can say is, you know, if anybody hears this that was uncertain, that's listening yeah. to this podcast, that wanted to give it a shot, give it a shot. You know, look, look, find us on Facebook, you know, the East Coast Gunpla Builders Club. You know, we're, we're friendly. We don't bite. And even if you're not on the coast, well, you know, we'll probably let you in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got a guy in there from Israel. So, you know. Uh, we, yeah. Yeah. We, and what is it? Also, you know, on Reddit, you can look up the Gunpla subreddit, mm. which is not full of toxic, awesome, oh, awful jerks, which a lot of subreddits are full mm -hmm. of. <laughs> they have helpful people there. It is a good place for info and techniques. There's a lot of basic how-to articles that you can find. Mm. You know, if you just Google how to do Gunpla, you'll find a lot of stuff. Those are two great resources to start from. Mm. Make use of them. Get into them. Buy local. Buy local. Buy local. Mm. I love Gundam Planet. You can always get what 
you want there. But before you go to HLJ or before you go to, you know, one of the big hobby sites, mm -hmm. you know, check out your local hobby shop. Chances are they can order stuff for you. Yeah. You will be supporting a family owned business mm -hmm. in something that is, to be honest, dying out in America. Mm. If you have a local hobby shop, you have an untapped font of knowledge that will help you. You don't know how to mix a particular color? Ask the guys at your uh, local hobby shop. You know, yeah, you give them your yes. business, they will reward you in incalculable droves. Buy local wherever possible. Yep. If you can't buy local, buy from Gundam Planet. <laughs> Excellent point. And it, it should be pointed out, I mean, it's it's getting um, easier and easier to find. I mean, Barnes & Noble is selling Gunpla now. So, you know, you might be surprised at what, what local hobby shop might have in terms of model kits. Yep, and the good thing about Barnes & Noble is when they overcalculate how popular Gunpla is, they have clearance sales. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed out on a big one, but, you know, oh. apparently uh, just not long after I think March they had a bunch mm. of going out of business uh, not going out of business uh, mm. you know reduction sales you could pick up real grade gun plot which normally run 30 bucks for like six seven eight nine dollars nice. <laughs> wow. so pay attention to the clearance racks at your local Barnes and Noble mm. but you know by all means buy local yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely cool well thank you very much for doing this it's yeah. been awesome hey, uh, look hey, forward to for seeing more me, of man. your uh, more of your kits yeah, yeah definitely. you know look for me online I'm happy to you know spam the stuff I got I don't have a web page or anything but you know maybe <laughs> One day that'll change if I ever get some web design skills. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Yep. Have a good one. You too.